Welcome, everyone. The first round has ended in a draw. Thank you very much to the players to come here at the press conference and to answer the questions. I'll start to answer several questions, and then I'll give the floor to the press. Um, what is the overall feeling after the game? Jan, let's go with you first. Rather, uh, rather interesting game. I think I was pressing at some point. Not something like very serious, but uh, I think it became at least very unpleasant after Queen F4 and Queen B8. Uh, but then, uh, I mean, I, I couldn't make up my mind like which pawn should I take and should I take a pawn at all? Like maybe play for domination. And probably, uh, probably Bishop D6, uh, and then Bishop C5 was one, one, one try, and Bishop C7, Bishop A5, another one. But I felt like might be Black is in time with some counter play, so I went up for domination. And then, okay, I think H5 was an important touch, and uh, I can't like really, uh, really kick the knight back to D8. So, I guess yeah, and then was more or less more or less fine. Thank you very much. There was uh, one one moment when uh, you played knight to f5. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a little trap. We we saw that, and there was also move h3. Would you consider that move? Uh, you mean instead of knight f5? Yes. After rook d8. Mm -hmm. um, but then if you take on d4, sorry, instead of knight c3. And then knight d5. It's the trap. Ah, uh, no, I didn't see it. Okay. Uh, the same question would go to Ding. Uh, how, what is your overall feeling after the game? Oh, I'm not happy. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I'm happy. I feel a little bit depressed uh, because during the game I feel this kind of uh, flow of uh, constitutions during the game. <laughs> yes, and during the first part of the game, before the mid middle game, I just cannot. Uh, no, I didn't think about chess so much. I, my mind was very strange. There are many memories, uh, feelings, also you know, strange things happen. I feel a little bit maybe I'm, I have something wrong with my mind. <laughs> maybe it can conclude by the pressure of the tournament, of the match. Mm -hmm. And then there. Uh, and just starting from the time trouble where I am getting back to the game, I, uh, I, uh, I'm not uh, a down upon, and his attacking chances are not seems not that strong. So I, I find that my position not that bad than I expected. Finally, the draw was uh, uh, what I can. Thank you very much for being so honest with us and share your feelings. Uh, this is very personal. Um, is that a reason why you were spending a lot of time in the in the lounge, on the sofa, yeah. rather than on the chessboard? Uh, actually, I changed the hotel um, so before the starting of the tournament. I. I, now I lived in the hotel that I'm more familiar with. I'm, I feel more comfortable. Uh, oh. Okay, that's the main reason why you changed the hotel, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, and the last question, uh, because uh, a lot of a lot of questions came uh, in the public about your codes. You were wearing the codes, uh, codes. while you were in the lounge. Uh -huh. or, was it cold for you there, or uh, you just felt comfortable in in a coat? Uh, because I very cold at the beginning of the uh, match, maybe because of uh, the anxieties. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Bian, I have last question, and then we will uh, go to the, to the press. Um, the playing venue here is different of Dubai 2021. It, it's, it has more space, and we have seen you walk in, in the playing venue. Do you find it more comfortable to have more space during the game to walk? Do you like it here? Uh, seems like this, yeah. Well, uh, Dubai was uh, 
I guess uh, not time to fill in, you know, to to go for some details. But the venue in Dubai was not like as good as it seemed. So here it's much better. Thank you. Um, now it's time to give the floor to the press. Please introduce yourself and the also the companies that you are representing. Please, Mike. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Mike Klein with Chess.com. My first question is for Grandmaster Jan Napomnishi. You gave a really interesting interview with Leoncio Garcia of El Pais, where you said that uh, you regretted not playing true to your form against Magnus in Dubai, and you tried to bore Magnus, and you maybe seemingly wanted to change that. Do you feel like you got off on the right start today with uh, that plan of sticking to your normal uh, aggressiveness? Well, uh, I don't know. So if I would win today, then yeah, it would be all right, definitely. Uh, uh, well, uh, every every game is unique. Every opponent is like every and each opponent is different. So, uh, frankly, <laughs> frankly, I don't know what to add. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, still Mike Klein, still chess.com. Uh, my next question is for Grandmaster Ding Loren. Um, this opening that was played against you with uh, move six, bishop takes c6, you have a pretty good record. You've beaten Magnus as black, Grishuk as black. I know it was a blitz game, but were you surprised that Jan went into an opening that you've done so well with as black? Well, actually, I didn't prepare anything uh, yesterday because I'm struggling with my, my feelings, my emotions. And the line was played, yes, by me. Uh, you mentioned many times, but I totally forgot it during the game. I played with my own. And it turns out the opening phrase was, uh, I played, I think, quite good. Uh, maybe I'm slightly better, but it's not so worse. Uh, I got this kind of upside color bishop. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I can say. Uh, and can I ask you, is there something specific that made this hotel not comfortable for you? Uh, what I can say is just my, I feel bad here. Uh, I feel more comfortable than the other one. Okay. Hello, my name is Jesse February. I have some questions from Twitter for both players. Um, the first one's for Jan. Uh, are you aware of your historic choice of the chair that you chose? Uh, you mean like elaborate on the history of choosing the the, the chair? Yes, it's yeah. also mentioned that the same it's the same chair that Fisher demanded in yeah, the yeah, yeah, well, I know this. But uh, it was quite occasional because um, I'd say uh, the place, let's say the chess, uh, the chess club in Moscow, we are we are running right now is, uh, I mean, there are like few such chairs there, so it was like just, I saw it and I thought, okay, why not? Um, Thank you. All right. The next question is for Deng. Um, from Emil, why did you choose Richard Rapport as your second? <laughs> uh, well, first, I like his playing. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The reason is first, I like his uh, creative playing style. And secondly, I can speak English with him. That helps, helps, helps me getting familiar with this English-speaking uh, environment. Uh, I, th I think there is something different. Maybe I also changed my <laughs> playing style a little bit by speaking English. <laughs> it's kind of two bit different way ways of thinking. Uh, yeah, and also we have, uh, we have uh, many things in common. For example, we loved uh, the uh, 80s uh, uh, ages of music, kind of music we listen together. Yeah, that's what I can see. I have the question about the music. Do you listen to music before the game? Have you actually listened to music uh, before the game today? today? Yeah. Uh, not today. today. Not today. <laughs> All right, do you have more questions, maybe in the audience? <laughs> Go ahead, Mike, please. MikeKleinChess.com, question for Jan. When did you find out that Rapport was on Ding Loren's team, and did it change your strategy at all, or did your team have to cram, so to speak, when they found out that information? I'm sorry, which information about? About Rapport helping. About Rapport? Yes, when did you find out, and did, it, did your team have to uh, adjust? Not really. 
you found out here at the event, I, I assume? I mean, yeah, we didn't change strategy yet, but uh, yeah, it's nice to see Richard here. Yeah, thank you. Um, 